let's now see how we can build an application and we will also talk about the available panels or windows in an RF Connect extension. In order to build an application, we need to first add a build configuration. This can be done from here, from the application window next to the application name. In this generate configuration or add build configuration window, we need to specify the board or development kit that we are intending to uh, flash our application on. You can see that um, I have listed here through the connected devices window, the connected development kits. I have the NRF52A33DK. And if I expand this, I can see the exact SOC or SIP used, its revision number, and also the COM port available on that board. Same thing for the other kit, which is the NRF9160. And you can see the um, SI, uh, SIP used and the available COM ports. So just for the sake of demonstration, let's uh, flash it on the NRF52A33DK. Okay, it's this one. And this option allows you to list all the boards, uh, not only Nordic uh, boards. From here, you can select the application configuration file if there are several. We have only one for the Blinky template. Same thing here, you can select the uh, kconfig fragment or overlay. If there are any, there is none for the uh, Blinky template. You can provide extra CMake arguments here. From here, you can specify the name of the build directory. We can uh, leave that to the default name. And uh, we recommend leaving the, this checked to invoke the build process after, generation, uh, after generating the configuration. If you want to enable uh, debugging, you instruct the compiler to uh, generate a debug-friendly uh, output, you check this, and the final step is to click on the generate config. This, since we, this, we left this checked, this will also uh, trigger the uh, building process. We can do like this to uh, get the terminal output, okay? And we can see now the, <coughs> the build process has um, started. Um, you can see now we have um, new windows that we will talk about in a bit. And you can see that the uh, build has successfully finished. And we can uh, tell that by um, seeing this message which displays uh, the uh, memory statistics of the, of the generated binary. We will switch gears now and talk about the available panels or windows in an RF Connect extension and understand the usages of each one of these panels. The first panel or window, we already have seen this one before and through which we can open the tutorials. We can create a new application from a sample or a template. We can add an existing application to a Visual Studio Code workspace, or we can create a new board, which is something we will cover in a separate video. As for the application window, through which we can select the active configuration and application. Now, I don't have any more application except this one. So for me to demonstrate this, I need to create a new application. And that's what I will do just now, just to demonstrate the uh, multi-application, multi-configuration feature of the NRF Connect extension. So let's just do that. We've already done that uh, before. So it's very easy, freestanding, give it a name. Uh, select the NRF Connect SDK uh, and Toolchain version, keep it 1.6.1 or the one that you're using. Uh, for the template, I'll use another one. I'll use the basic uh, thread, basic thread, which simply uh, demonstrate the multi-threading uh, feature in NRF Connect SDK. So it will create three uh, threads one that control LED zero at 100 millisecond, the other one control LED one at 1000 millisecond, and the last thread is to uh, control the printing. Let's select that and let's create application. So you will see now that the application window will have two applications. And my first app is the active one. I can change it to the my second app by simply selecting it. Now this is now, this is the active application. Of course, it doesn't contain any configuration. I can add that as we've seen before. So let's, um, let's actually create two configurations for this application. One is targeting, targeting the NRF9160DK. 
Okay, so it's the this one, and secure. Of course, the uh, NRF9160 is uh, has a secure and non-secure partition. So I'm targeting the an insecure partition. Okay, and then uh, just leave things as default. Directory, leave it as default. Generate configuration. This will, of course, also will um, uh, invoke the building process because I left this checked. We can track the progress of the building by uh, checking the terminal. We can see that uh, everything is uh, going well. And uh, we should see that the uh, in, in a second, we will see like a new entry for it, for the my second app, which should contain the uh, it should contain the configuration uh, for the NRF9160 DK. And this can be seen here. Now, let's say I want to target um, another board or I want to uh, use a new uh, configuration or a new build configuration. I can simply do that by adding another uh, configuration. And uh, let's say this time I want to flash it on the 33. So I can select 91, uh, sorry, 52, 833, okay. And you can see the tool by itself will create you another build directory, just so it doesn't conflict with the one already available. And we can generate config. So we will have now another uh, entry here. So you can see an application could have multiple build configuration and you can simply click on them and, and select uh, which one is the active one. So we can see now we have two uh, configuration and we can simply click on it to select it. And of course, we can switch the application simply by clicking on the application. So the number here right next to the app name is how many configurations you have. Okay, so with this, I think we covered the, uh, the applications window. Let's move to the details window. So this will give you the details of the selected or activated uh, application. So you can see if I click now on my second app, you can see now we are at the my second app detail window. Let's go back here and see what we have in the details window. The details window show us the uh, source code. So we can have access to the main of my first app, which if we recall is based on the Blinky. So you can see this is the my first app uh, source code. And it also nicely gathered to you the used uh, modules from the NRF Connect SDK and also from Zephyr. So everything used will be listed here and you can, you can access it. Uh, the input files is where you will have your uh, application configuration file and your CMake list for CMake. Uh, output files, of course, are the um, generated output from the build. And the, uh, the device tree is a very nice, con convenient way to uh, get a nice overview of the uh, hardware used. So you will get uh, information about the Let's expand this to have a better uh, access to the device view. So we have um, a nice graphical representation of the hardware, the GPIO, the memory, the interrupts, and also like the buses. So for example, if I want to check the I, uh, I2C, we can uh, check which pins are uh, used for that, for the I2C zero controller, for example. So it's a very nice, convenient way to have access to uh, hardware information right from the graphical user interface. This is the details window, which is again, is per configuration, per, um, per application. So if you change the um, application and you change the, you see now it's build one. If I do like this, it's on, uh, it's on build. So it is the details for the active application slash configuration used, okay? Let's go back here. And the action window, so through this, uh, we have already covered the build. Pristine build build uh, differs from build, so you use a pristine build every time you do changes to the uh, input files, which is the CMake list or the application configuration file. So anytime you do changes to these files, you must do a pristine build for these uh, set settings to be persistent. 
to experiment with uh, configurations temporary and to explore available uh, configurations. Okay, config uh, configurations, you can use the GUI config and that's the uh, interface of it. Uh, flash is to flash the application to a development kit or board. Debug is to invoke um, and establish a, a GDB session. Debug with Ozone is to establish a, a debugging session using a Sager Ozone, if you have that one installed. And as we talked before, the connected devices will list the uh, connected boards or development kits. In addition, it will show you details like the SIP or SOC used and the exact uh, uh, revision number along with the available COM ports. And through this, you can also start a terminal. Uh, like it could be a serial terminal or an RTT terminal, and it will be opened in here. This brings us to the uh, command line interface available to us. So uh, the nice thing about this extension, it provides you full access to both uh, command line tools. And of course, uh, you have this nice, intuitive graphical user interface. So let's say now you want to do something using the command line. You can open a new shell like this. And you see here, like it uh, prompts you to uh, which application you want to uh, start uh, interacting with using command line. Let's use the first one, for example. And now you have access to the full command line tools, like West, for example. It's configured and ready. We can convert that by typing West help. All right. The debug console, we use that if you want to use um, um, GTB commands. Before ending this video, let's talk about an important concept, which is uh, Visual Studio Code Workspace. And uh, we see now that if we switch to the Explorer view in Visual Studio Code, we have both our applications. So you see my first app is here. And if I hover the mouse over it, it will give me the directory where it's stored. And we can see that the build directory, which simply contains the output of the build process, if I open my second app, I have two build directories simply because I created two build configurations. And we can see they are grouped together into this untitled workspace. So this workspace allows us to, if you want to think about it, think about it as a project that simply um, encapsulate these two applications. It allows us to have configurations or settings only related to these uh, apps. So it, it groups them together. And it's a really good idea to, to save this uh, workspace. So now it's not saved. You can see it's untitled. You can save it in any directory you like. So let's just um, click on file and then select save workspace as. And again, this is a, a workspace for um, Visual Studio Code workspace. Same rules as before, keep things short and close to the root directory. So I'll actually call this my uh, workspace. Um, let's call it my apps Nordic, just to keep things organized and to keep things grouped together. And again, a workspace in Visual Studio Code will allow us to have settings only apply to these two applications or the, the applications that you added, not necessarily to as much as you can. With this, I think we covered um, uh, all these windows, what they mean, what they do. And we're already, um, uh, in the next video, we'll talk about flashing an application to a development kit.